I got a call from a student and she told me that she has given GMAT few days back and she scored 650. Her verbal was 36 and quant was 44. She said that she has been doing well in verbal. Her score has been around 36 to 39. But the quant was ranging from 44, 45 to 46. So 46 was highest that she got. And now she wants to prepare for quant so that she can reach 49, 50. Because to reach 700 plus on GMAT, there are two ways. Either you score 43, 44 or 45 in verbal and you score around 45, 46 in quant. Now getting to 44, 45 in verbal is a pretty tough task. So other way is out that you reach 49, 50 in quant and you don't uh, reach around 37, 38 in verbal and you go past 700 mark. So in this video, I'll share a few steps that I normally follow with my students that help them to reach 49, 50. And I'll share the experience of one of my students who joined my classes at when he prepared himself for some time and his quant was around 39. And now after two months, he is getting around 14 and 15 in the mock test. So I'll share that experience. So in this video, I'll share five steps that I normally share with my students or I recommend my students to reach 50 from probably 40 to 43 or 44 till 50. Hi, my name is Mandeep. I'm a GMAT coach and founder of GMAT Mantra. So I think uh, around January or February, uh, Kartike joined my classes. So when he joined me, uh, he said that he has been doing some studies himself, self-study. And he gave a mock test in which uh, he scored around uh, 39 in quant. And he was getting around 31, 32 in verbal. So he said that uh, he's afraid of quant, though he's not very weak in quant, but still he's not able to manage 15 quant. So when we started with the classes, initially I asked, how did he prepare? So he said that uh, he just look at the theory part, then he practiced few questions and then, you know, he has done a lot of questions in quant, but he doesn't see any improvement. So these, this is the problem with most of the students who, who are you know are getting around 43, 44 in quant also, whether they have prepared or given GMAT or given mock test, but then they're not able to go past this 44, 45 mark. So the number one thing that you need to work on is the right mindset or the right way to prepare. The first step is that when you prepare for quant, okay, there are two aspects to that. One is the theory part, other is the practice. So in quant, you can understand that theory is not a lot except in topics like geometry and coordinate. The rest of the topics have limited theory. So first, make sure that you memorize the theory. You should be aware of every formula. You cannot say that I don't remember the properties or I don't remember the formulas because that's number one. So always memorize the formulas, okay? Second, when you practice, the major mistake that most students do is that when they practice, when they start with the very easy question, they start getting it right. But as the level of question increases, they struggle to get the answer. So they try a question for maybe five, seven minutes. If they're not able to solve, they look at the explanations. So this is the number one mistake, looking at the explanation for the questions that you're not able to solve yourself. Okay, if you do that, at that moment, you will think, okay, I understand now how to solve it. But next time when you get a similar question, you will not be able to solve it because your mind has not given the answer. So this is one of, I would say it's 90%. If you just sit and solve every question yourself, you're automatically get 48, 49. You don't have to work on anything else except solving each question yourself. Now, why we do that? That brings me to point number two. Point number one is that always solve questions yourself. Okay, never look at the explanation for any question, whether you get question, whether you get that question right or wrong. Always solve it yourself. Okay. Now, why you why did this happen? Because everybody says that more practice you do, better you get. Probably it is good if you understand that if you practice question with the right approach. It's not that if you practice more, you will get better. I would say if you practice more, you get worse. See, what happens is that because we have this mindset, okay, I have to do maybe 50 questions today. Okay, so with that number in mind, 
what do you do? You just look at the question and uh, you try to solve it for two, three, four minutes. If you're not able to solve it, you lose patience because you have a pressure that, oh, I have to do 50 questions. In that case, you just look at the explanations, read the explanations, move to the next question. Probably over here, what you have to do is that rather than, you know, doing 50 questions, do five questions and probably invest half an hour or one hour per question. And when I say invest half an hour, one hour per question, I mean it. Okay, because initially you have to you know, solve yourself. So once you solve a question yourself, next time if you get a similar question, you'll always get it right. And you can solve that same question in two minutes because now you know how to solve such type of questions. Because once you solve it, it stays with you. So whenever next time you get this question, you will be able to solve it in two minutes. So get out of this pressure of doing a lot of questions. Do limited questions. Probably per topic, if you do maybe 30, 40 questions, that are more than sufficient. You don't have to do hundreds of questions. Do those 30, 40 questions yourself. Okay. So first mindset was that no, never look at the explanation for any question. Second, don't focus on doing more questions. Focus on doing limited questions, but do it yourself without time pressure. Third, See, when students solve questions, they always attack the questions. When I say attack the question, I've seen students who are at 40 or 40, they don't even understand what they have to actually find. They read the question so quickly without even analyzing, they start solving. So in maths, you have to understand GMAT is, you know, it's, 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 a, it's not an exam of knowledge. A GMAT plays around with language and probably 70, 80% of the questions of GMAT can be solved orally. You just need pen and paper for doing basic calculations. So what students do is they read the question and immediately start solving or they start jotting down everything what they are reading. So when you're you know, reading the question, keep your focus on the screen. Okay. Don't try to note down everything. Don't try to solve it immediately. Read the question, understand what exactly they are asking. Okay. After that, ask, how should I solve this or solve this question? There are only two or three ways to solve any type of question. See, number one is that you you, know, you put in some values, you plug in values that I call as substitution. So there'll be certain variables. You just put values for those variables. Second is you use some formula or some equation. And third, in case of problem solving questions, you can work around with the options. These are the only three ways in which you can solve a question. But I rarely see a student even thinking, which method should I use? Which approach should I use to solve this question? They simply just read the question without even understanding what they need to find. They start solving it and then they start putting values. And you know, to when they just start solving it, in between they get stuck. And now they say, what should I do now? And then they go back, read the question again, again, without even understanding, they again start solving the same approach. And they get stuck at the same uh, thing same step where they're not able to solve or go further. So you're wasting time. And once you're wasting time, you have invested three, four minutes. Now the pressure builds up, you mark something and move on. But instead, if you just read the question properly, then you ask, okay, what do I need to find? Then you ask, which approach should I use? Should I put in values or should I use a formula or should I work with the options? So if you follow these steps, you would see that you can solve the same question in probably a minute, minute and a half or max two minutes. And you don't have to, you know, uh, do a lot of calculations because now you know exactly what you need to find. Okay. So the third step is don't attack the question. Understand the question. Ask what is the right approach to solve the questions. Fourth, when you give the mock tests. So uh, in the mock test, normally what happens is that everybody has told you that you have to, you know, uh, get all the questions right. That's not true. Because when you try to get all the question uh, right, you're in a rush and you make a lot of silly mistakes. And when you make a lot of silly mistakes, you know, you get the course question right, which you can easily get right. So when you're giving a mock test or when you're giving a GMAT, remember this, this is a very basic philosophy you need to remember. Focus on 100% accuracy. All aptitude tests are about, you know, focusing on getting as many questions right as possible and focus on accuracy. Okay, for example, let's say uh, you're getting around 44, 45. 44, 45 means you're getting around 16, 17, 18 questions right out of 31. That means you're getting 14, 15 questions wrong. That means you're wasting half an hour because the question that you got wrong, you would have invested some time also. 
in solving them. So that means you're just wasting time also in getting them wrong. What if I just invest that half an hour in only just doing 20 questions? So for example, there are 62 minutes and I focus on doing only 20 questions and I focus on 100% accuracy. And it is possible in quant. Okay, if you just be careful and if you have just practiced the right way, you can easily get it. So if you just focus on getting 20 questions right, you're getting around 47. And for the last 11 questions, simply mark something so that you can complete the section. For last 11 questions, you don't have to bother just in last two, three minutes, mark something and complete it. On the other side, if you literally want, you want 14 and 50, focus on first 25, 26 question and try to get 23, 24 right. You will end up getting 49, 50. Okay, so focus on maximum accuracy. Don't focus on you know, attempting every question. So if you just follow these few steps, your score can easily move from 43, 44 to 50. And this is what I have uh, told my student. Just one more step, which is probably, I would say, the most important thing. And that is anxiety. What happens is most of the students have this, you know, this pressure that if they don't get a good score in GMAT, what will happen? And that is the killer, I would say. Because I have students, you know, who have been scoring around maybe 750, 760, even 790 in the mock test back to back. But in the actual GMAT, they fell to around 600, 620, 630 just because of anxiety. So what happens is everybody, you know, they just think that anxiety will go automatically. But you have to understand that anxiety is a habit and you have to work on the anxiety side. So there are one or two things that I recommend to my students. I just tell them either you can understand logically or philosophically, whatever works for you. So what I tell them, okay, just keep repeating. I don't care how much I score in GMAT. My life will not end. I can still make a good living. I can still earn good uh, money because GMAT is just a, another way, you know, to improve, you know, grow in career. So if GMAT doesn't happen, still you'll not fail because understand probably what percentage of students goes to, you know, top B schools, probably five, seven percent of the total population. Rest 90, 95 percent. There are people who are pretty more successful than the people who are going to the B schools. I'm not saying don't go to the B school, but understand that GMAT is not, if you don't get a good score in GMAT, it's not the end of life. So you have to, you know, keep telling yourself this, that I don't care what I score in GMAT. My life is not dependent on GMAT. If you keep repeating these things again and again, and because we normally forget, that's where we get anxiety. But if you forget that, oh, I don't care what happens. Okay, you stay relaxed. Now you are relaxed. Second, you have a good, you've done good practice. With the relaxed mind, when you solve the questions, you automatically get the questions right because now you are able to focus. Now here comes the logic. What happens is that student is solving the question and after every few seconds, he's looking at the time. Okay, what is the time? What is the time? So when you're just you know, looking at the question and then you're going back to the time, you're losing focus. When you lose focus, you take more time than required because you read the same thing three times, four times that you can understand in one go. So if you can understand in one go, probably you will take less time. So if you don't look at the time and if you're not in a rush, you will be concentrated. When you concentrate, when you focus, you work at your optimum level. Optimum is your best level that you can achieve. That doesn't mean that if you concentrate, you will reach 51, but you will reach your maximum. Okay, so when, you have to just tell when I focus, when I concentrate, I take less time and my output is maximum. But when I just keep rushing and looking at the time, you're just wasting time. Okay, so work on your anxiety. So first four were basically approach knowledge. But I would say if you, if you have high anxiety, it doesn't matter how much practice you do, you'll not be able to perform in, in the GMAT. Okay, so work on your uh, anxiety along with your GMAT knowledge and uh, your approach. So try these few steps and see how things change. And you can easily see your score improving to 14 and 15 point. Thank you.